This is a quick review of a dual transmitter wireless microphone kit by Comica. Besides its affordability, what this WM300 kit brings to the table is the ability to feed two transmitter packs into one receiver. My point of comparison is the Roadlink system I've been using for about a year, which has worked out well for me because it offers the option of hooking straight into a shotgun microphone with phantom power. But it's worth mentioning that you can get a similar module from Comica for this system too, that can simultaneously transmit with one of the lav packs. You'll notice looking at the road kit that there are no external antennas, partly because of its high 2.4 GHz frequency band, which limits its range a little, and it's vulnerable to interference from Wi-Fi devices that share the same unlicensed spectrum, while preferring walls to bounce off. In this video, we'll explore all the features of the Comica system, which includes that second transmitter sending at the same time, which isn't possible using the road link. Starting with the receiver, besides twin antennas, you'll also notice an IR or infrared port that's one way to synchronize the transmitters with the receiver. We'll see it in the menus later on. The 3.5 millimeter output jack is stereo, which is especially important here because you can make it allocate one transmitter to the left channel and the other to the right. The transmitter also has a micro USB port for charging its internal lithium battery. Unfortunately, there's no backup alternative to get power from alkaline batteries, but you can always try tethering a USB power bank. Here you can see one of the transmitters with its included lavalier microphone plugged in and secured with its screw-in connector. The other included transmitter is identical with its own lav mic, and just like the receiver, they both have internal batteries charged through a micro USB port on the bottom. I like how there's not only the usual belt clip on the back of each transmitter, but also a quarter inch 20 mounting screw socket, which is something you normally only see on the receiver side. And that frequency range of 520 to 580 megahertz tells you that this system uses older UHF frequencies, which have pros and cons compared to Roadlink's 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. The signal travels farther, but the frequency hopping to avoid interference is less sophisticated. We'll see this in the transmitter menus with the first option to select between group A at the lower end of 500 megahertz and group B at the upper end. But also there are channels within those ranges and you can either manually select them or automatically sync them using that IR port. Looking now at the receiver, really the goal is to avoid interference if you literally hear it whereas that sophisticated Roadlink system listens thousands of times per second and hops around to avoid interference before you hear it. So basically this is another case of pros and cons. Back at the transmitter, you can specify the impedance at the audio input between microphone and line level. You can also decide whether to add a low cut filter that can reduce hum or wind noise at low intensity or high intensity. And you can also boost each radio's power output to a high setting, if necessary, using more battery. Finally, there's a muting option in the menu, but it's easiest just to press the power button with one tap, and you'll see the top audio light turn red. One really important menu option on the receiver is to select between stereo output and mono output. If you're using just one transmitter, then mono is just fine, and you'll get the same audio in the left and right channels at the physical stereo mini plug output. But if you're using two transmitters at once, then it's wisest to choose stereo so that one transmitter is on the left side and the other on the right. This way you can control the level separately later on. But you'll need to be really careful in post-production to reallocate those channels onto separate tracks so they aren't sounding hard left and hard right in the final export. Another nice feature is the ability to power off a transmitter remotely from the receiver, as seen here. And you can also set the volume at this preamp phase, especially to avoid clipping in really loud environments. Plus, you've been looking at a bluish backlight on the LCD display, but to save energy, it automatically turns off after a time you can set. And of course, there are the usual language settings and menu-based ability to do a factory reset besides that pinhole we saw at the bottom of the unit. 
What's next is a series of audio quality tests. I've been using a high quality wired mic so far, but now I'm switching to the live audio from a professional recorder. So this first test is the most important one because we're seeing how the included lavalier microphone sounds connected into its WM300TX transmitter by Comica. And that's going into the receiver that you see on top of the audio recorder. And then that output, which doesn't require phantom power, goes into the XLR input on the Zoom F6. The reason I'm doing the test this way is so that we have a level playing field with the highest possible quality audio recorder, seeing how well it performs. One important test for any situation like this is for me to then stop talking, and then we'll hear what the signal to raise noise ratio and basically the noise floor is for the product when there's five seconds of silence. And we're back. For comparison, we now have set up the Rode RodeLink system. And on the right side, you see the transmitter unit, which is actually the XLR version, but you can see at the top right, there's an eighth inch input that I've plugged into the included Rode Lavalier microphone. So we're testing the quality of that as it sends to the receiver that you see on top of the audio recorder. And that in turn has an 1 8 inch stereo output that's feeding into a monaural XLR input, no phantom again necessary. And finally going into that Zoom F6 recorder, which again is the highest quality we can use for a level playing field to test these. And then the all important silence of five seconds to see how the noise floor performs. And that includes ambient noise. To wrap things up, I do hear a small quality difference that's better on the Rode Link, probably because of its Rode lavalier microphone, so it's worth getting better lavs and trying that out on the Comica transmitters. But the versatility of being able to get two separate transmitters feeding into one receiver is the best feature of this Comica kit. Other folks like Sony are just starting to launch products with the feature, but at a much higher price point. The all-metal chassis on each of these Comica units feel durable, and performance seems adequate, so you might want to save a few bucks and give these a try. I hope this all helps, and I've got links down below where you can order from Amazon.